We are so happy you are here. Before I start, I would like to remind you we have a concert on Friday night, and we are counting on your attendance. Uh, Bill Jones and Sidney Lehmanstein uh, are people who have been involved in our church for years. Bill Jones used to be the singer with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. That's pretty impressive, huh? And Sidney Lehman, well, you know her. She was part of our church for a very long time and did absolutely everything you could do here at church. And so now she's coming back to do a concert for us. So I hope you will attend Friday night at 7.30. We appreciate that enormously. Today, I want to talk about your secret power. Sounded good when I came up with that, your secret power. And then I had to really think about what is our secret power? What is our secret power? So it occurs to me that when we know that our relationship to life when we really know our relationship to life, things like doubt and insecurity just naturally disappear. And faith and love, I believe, come forward and take their place. So what is our relationship to life? Well, it's what Dean just sang about. We are one. We are one with the principle, power, and presence that creates the entire universe. We are one with God. We are one with each other. And so we, you and I, have a power that can help us overcome our problems. I believe we do. And because we always, in every moment, in every instance, we have the choice. I can be at effect or I can be at cause. Now, we teach in the science of mind philosophy that causation is from within. Right? So perhaps we know someone who seems to have a deep calm and peace. You know, uh, they just don't seem to get disturbed or distracted or too stressed by external outside events, I believe that could be us. That could be each and every one of us. Do you ever feel when you get really still and quiet and peaceful that you could, you could almost reach out and touch something that would make you whole and happy and complete in every way? You see, you see I suspect we all have, and we all have this sense maybe that that it's right there, we're just so, so close to it. See, I think that the principle of life itself has implanted within us the voice that says, you know, why be afraid? Why be unhappy? Why not live and love and be joyful? See, intuitively, we know there is more for us to get out of life. I think that's really true. I think every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth knows that there is more for them to get out of life. So. Well over 100 years ago, Emma Curtis Hopkins said it like this, that we are all seeking our good. She even goes on to say that the worm in the dust is moving because the worm is after its good. Right? So if God has created good for all of us, shouldn't we have it? Absolutely. It seems only right. It seems polite to accept the good that God has created for us. So what is, is it that I can tune into at the center of my being, that if I tuned into that, everything would be all right. See, because I believe that there is within each and every one of us, at the center of our being, there is a place where all is well. There is a place that's never been hurt by something somebody else says or something somebody does. There is a place within us that never lacks, that's never lonely, that's never unexpressed creatively. That's the place that I'm interested in. That's the place I want us to touch into. Because Jesus brought an invisible power to life. You know that Jesus said God is love and God is life and God is truth and God is power. God is all power, all life, all love, all truth. Not just some power or some love. You know, and, and Jesus, what he did that I think is so significant is that he triumphed over uncertainty. So Jesus said, you know, well, to do what I do what you first have to recognize is that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom is right here. It's available to us. We don't see it because we're looking exclusively with human eyes, but we have to open our spiritual eyes. We have to open our spiritual ears and look with a divine eyesight and listen with a divine hearing. This thing called life flows through everything. You know, and you can think yourself absolutely into anything. You can think yourself up, you can think yourself down, you can think yourself rich, you can think yourself poor. You can think yourself sick, you can think yourself well, you can think yourself happy, you can think yourself unhappy. Right? So we use the law of life affirmatively. This is the science of mind. We're working with the law and we're working with that spiritual law in an affirmative way. And we must master our thinking to experience greater freedom and greater joy. And I know that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants more freedom and more joy. 
This is, I think, our secret power. This is it, really. The ability to be confronted with a situation or just say, okay, here's my life, and now I'm going to think affirmatively into the law of mind, and life will give back to me what I'm thinking into it. See, because life responds to our thought. So we want to dwell on the good. Look, I know it's been difficult for everybody. There is nobody I have met or talked to in the last year that has not had some level of difficulty. But here's the thing. We want to dwell on the good. There is good stuff going on in your life, and you have to find it right now, and you have to praise it and give thanks for it. Think about the person you desire to become, the consciousness that you want to be stepping into and living your life from. Give thanks for that in advance. Think about the healing you want to have for yourself. Give thanks for that in advance. Think about somebody in your life who maybe has a similar problem. Be willing to pray for them because that's how you will receive the grace from that experience. Life responds to our thought. It's easier for life to bless us if we think in an affirmative way. Mm -hmm. Right? So life is love, life is beauty, life is wisdom. We can use its power, I think, as we embody its essence. And how do I embody that essence? I say, well, the, the principle of life is within me. The principle of wisdom is within me. The principle of power already exists within me. And when I change my thinking, what's happening is I'm introducing a new cause that's going to create a new effect. This is why I want to change my thinking, so that I can keep shaping my experience of life in a better and greater way. We know how this goes. If I want to live a life of love, I have to heal anything that is not love within me. And boy, sometimes that's really, really hard because we want to hang on to those little unforgivenesses or big unforgivenesses as the case may be. You know, if I want to live a life of abundance, I have to heal any sense of lack in me. Hmm? If I want to live a life of creative expression, I have to heal any sense of not creatively expressed that might be rattling around within me. So to live a beautiful life, I have to commune with beauty. I just had a few days off. It was great. And um, I mean, it was really great because I did a lot of communing. Uh, I sat outside, and I meditated in the sun, and just went for long walks. And it was wonderful just to drink that in, you know, because um, I think that beauty, beauty in the world around us is what God's love looks like. Yeah, that's what God, and joy is what God's love feels like, but beauty is what God's love looks like. And so I think we have to achieve uh, something on the inside. We have to experience something on the inside. We want to have that spiritual realization where we know that what is true is unseen and what we see is just an effect. See, every manifestation of faith through prayer is the result of a cause that we have set in motion. So I would ask you today to think about what are you setting in motion? Where is your faith right now? Do you have faith in the good, or do you have faith that it's all going a heck in a handbasket? You know? Um, and if you do have faith in the second, I'm going to ask you to self-correct here. You know, that you are a center where life passing through you becomes a definite, unique individual. And so daily, we sense the presence of life within us. God life, God love, God health, God abundance. It's right here. It's within us all right now, seeking a way out, looking for a way to get expressed. And how does it get expressed? By our belief, by our thinking, by the way we act, by the way we speak. We use the law of life every time we think, even if we're using it wrongly. And I have certainly been someone who has used the law of life incorrectly. Because whatever you say to the universe, the universe says yes. So if you say, I'm not much, the universe says, yes, that's right. And if you say, I'm absolutely the best there is, the universe says, yes, you're right. See, it doesn't matter how long a room is dark. Isn't that fascinating? That a room can be dark for decades, but as soon as you turn on the switch, the light comes on. You know, an undesirable condition can be in place for a very long time in our life. It doesn't matter how long somebody has been sick, or how long they've been alone, or how long they've been broke. You know, it doesn't matter that as soon as we turn on the light, as soon as we add truth to that situation, it starts to turn around. See, but without faith, we cannot do our best or get the most out of living. So whatever faith you have, and I know everybody has faith in something right now, I'm just going to ask you to water that faith a little bit, to expand it a little bit. See, because there is no substitute for this kind of faith. 
I think there's something about our spiritual nature that demands a constant communication with the invisible. That as we grow spiritually, we have to constantly be in touch with that other dimension, that spiritual dimension. There is a divine mechanic at the center of our being who knows how to repair whatever needs to be repaired. I believe that. And so we could be in heaven right now. Isn't that extraordinary? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, we could be in heaven right now as a guest of the infinite. But the ticket in, I believe, is an affirmative attitude, praying in an affirmative way. This is our direct line of communion with God. God's presence, I believe, yes, is everywhere, but it's also right where we are, right in our own individual life. God's presence is here. We're in this divine partnership with life. And so now I'd like to share, uh, as we go into our time of spiritual practice together, uh, I'm going to start off with some words from Ernest Holmes. So I invite you to turn your attention inward and become still with me together for a moment. And as we turn our attention inward, we know and accept right now our divine birthright. I now consciously enter into partnership with love, with peace, with joy, with good, with abundance. I feel the infinite presence close around me. I feel the warmth and color and radiance of this presence like a living thing, which I am enveloped in. I am no longer afraid of life. A deep and abiding sense of calm and of peace flows through me. I have faith to believe that the kingdom of God is at hand. It is right where I am, here, now, today, in this very moment. I feel there is a divine law of God which can, does, and will govern everything. Therefore, I feel that everything in my life that is constructive, everything in my thought that is life-giving, it's all blessed and prospered. It blesses everyone I meet. It makes glad every situation I find myself in. It brings peace and comfort to everyone I contact. I am united with everything in love and peace and joy. And I know that the presence of life and love gently leads me and all others, guiding, guarding, sustaining, unfolding now and forever. And so we continue in this consciousness now, recognizing that the infinite spirit of life is right where we are and that we are one with life and we are one with each other. And I continue speaking this word for each and every one of us, that what seems to be out of sorts is now exactly as it should be. Where there is an appearance of lack, I claim abundance. Where there is seeming sickness, I claim health. Where there is aloneness, I claim an abundance of love. I know this is the truth for each and every one of us. And we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and parents and children. And we know that right where they are, wherever they are on the face of the earth, that God is present. We surround them with light and love and peace and healing. We let our prayer be a blessing energy in the world that we live in so that our prayer goes out from us, from our consciousness, out into the world because we are connected with everyone and we pray a prayer of peace and love and healing and joy for all people. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is raising up, that there is healing for all of us. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks, I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. So blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed.
All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. So